On November 14, 2018, members of the Minority Students Advisory Board, or MSAB, crashed a faculty senate meeting with a singular demand, a town hall. We are here not because we want to be, but because we have been denied an opportunity to be heard. MSAB wanted the town hall to express concern about public safety's proposal to station armed officers on the Eastman and River campuses. President Richard Feldman, Senior VP Holly Crawford, and Director of Public Safety Mark Fisher, who were present at the meeting, had already denied this request repeatedly. At first, the Faculty Senate co-chairs and some senators tried to curb the protest. Later, more protesters entered. Before long, President Feldman reversed his initial stance. I will agree to hold the public forum. The conversation over arming officers didn't spring up overnight. Behind an ambitious leader, public safety has driven to expand its capabilities for nearly a decade. In 2011, Mark Fisher began serving as Deputy Director of the Department of Public Safety. But I did have three legal size notepad, single space pages of things that I needed to accomplish uh, when I got here, so there was a lot of work to do. Public Safety added sworn peace officers to its security force in 2013. These officers are sworn under state law, with authority similar to a police officer, only on university property. All officers were unarmed. That December, Fisher became Director of Public Safety. In October of 2015, then-President Joel Seligman created a commission, chaired by Crawford, to make a recommendation on whether to arm public safety. This commission consisted entirely of administration. In April 2016, the Campus Times reported that many students were voicing objections to arming public safety. Despite this, the Commission's report submitted in September 2016 recommended arming medical center public safety officers, as well as some command staff. The Commission recommended the arming of 38 officers, broken into three shifts, plus four members of command staff, a total of 42. President Seligman reassured students that the proposal was not part of a larger plan. There is no agenda here. If we do go forward, no decision has been made. We're based on the facts as presented now. He adopted the recommendation and then created the Public Safety Review Board. The current review board consists of a trustee, three VPs, two faculty members, a med center resident, and SA president. In 2018, Fisher approached Crawford about re-evaluating the idea of arming officers to cover all university property. As part of his proposal, uh, his original proposal, he had wanted to have um, coverage across the institution and not just in the medical center. Fisher first presented the proposal at a review board meeting in May, where it was tabled because there was no student representative. The proposal has two major recommendations, which, the proposal says, logically evolve our peace officer program to its next stage. The first recommendation is to allow supervisors with armed clearance, generally the most experienced officers, unrestricted access throughout the university. Currently, they are only allowed access in the event of emergencies, regardless of whether a weapon is involved. The second recommendation is to assign an armed vehicle officer to River Campus another to Brooks Landing for UR properties across the river, and one armed officer to the Eastman campus. A major justification in the proposal is mass shooting data. Another is the response time it takes an armed officer from the med center to get to either campus. It's really um, abysmal at the Eastman school because we can't respond there. Here on the river campus, it's, it's not great. Um, but probably an officer from the medical center is going to arrive here before a Rochester Police Department officer. The proposal was reintroduced to the review board in an October 2018 meeting, where the student representative, SA President Beatrice Gil Gonzalez, was present. They talked about how to discuss the proposal with the community. And she suggested at that time, to, let, let's, let's take it to the, to the student senate first just as a jumping off point, right? Oh, okay, let's talk to them, see where, where's the next steps to go. And obviously that was probably not the right way to start, <laughs> uh, given where we are today. That month, Fisher presented the proposal to the Student Senate. I remember getting a text from someone on Senate and they were like, 
public safety is proposing guns. I saw it in the chat, and I looked up at everybody else in the room, and they they saw the same thing, and we were all on the same wavelength. We were like, no. <laughs> we got up, we left the house, and we ran to listen comments, and we walked into the room. <laughs> This is where MSAB comes in. MSAB is a collection of leaders from campus minority groups. That student all the way to the right is Tara Egan, MSAB's president. I was sort of outraged, but more so outraged at how it was being carried out rather than the proposal itself. So it then became two separate issues because it was painted as just pe public safety is going to do a presentation, not that the, it was a proposal to arm public safety. There could have been better ways we communicated, but everything was moving pretty fast. A few days after presenting, Fisher met with student leaders at a student government luncheon for a more in-depth discussion on the proposal for those unsatisfied by the SA meeting. MSAB held an emergency meeting that weekend. Over 100 students and faculty showed up. After we had met as a community, we just thought that it was only fair to pose our questions to the administration. And the best way we understood to do that was through a community forum. This would prove difficult. In 2016, the commission that recommended arming officers in the Med Center had used public forums as a part of their research. For three and a half hours, I stood there kind of being yelled at. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't want to get myself into that position again. Seligman, who often used town halls to gather community feedback, also employed them after the 2016 proposal was submitted. In September of 2017, he held a town hall with students in the wake of the sexual harassment scandal involving Professor T. Florian Yeager. I have said that yes I or no? No, Lindsay, that's not fair. That is fair. No, you got to give a long okay, recitation. Okay, next question. Lindsay, if I you want to... I read a policy to... that you enforce. In January of 2018, Seligman announced his resignation as president of the university to allow for healing our campus. He was replaced by President Richard Feldman for the interim. In an interview with the Campus Times that same month, President Feldman expressed a preference for small group meetings and a distaste for town hall style forums. So when MSAB emailed administration and public safety about participating in a public forum, they got some pushback. We, they just weren't having the forum. I much prefer groups discussing issues in, in a really uh, what strikes me as a more productive way. MSAB sent a mass email to its members saying that the proposal endangers many and calling for public safety to attend a public forum. A day later, administration announced the creation of an ad hoc committee to review the proposal. Once I understood the depth of feelings about it, I thought that was the best way to, to uh, make sure that no decision was made before there was a good campus-wide discussion. Meanwhile, Feldman, Crawford, and Fisher were invited to speak at a faculty senate meeting where they would discuss the proposal. Professor Tom Gibson had invited Egan to speak there, giving her the time and place. The co-chairs turned him down. But after a Douglas Leadership House meeting, somebody had an idea. In the room, it was just like, we felt so defeated because it was sort of like they got us, we can't, we can't do anything about it anymore. Like they're not gonna listen to us. One of the people that was sitting in the room and said, do we know what faculty senate is? I said, yeah, yeah, we know what faculty, faculty senate is. Like it's, why don't we just? <laughs> You're like, what if we just show up? They're gonna be there, Feldman's gonna be there. Wait, that, that could work. <laughs> like that could actually work. And that was, I think it was two days before Faculty Senate. So we just went into like, it was like overdrive. <laughs> like, I tell you, we, none of us slept. The Faculty Senate meeting was scheduled for Wednesday, November 14th. At DLH, the protesters practiced. We are here not because we want to be, but because we have been denied an opportunity to be heard. Personally, I want to see the pearls being eradicated fully. But as for right now, I just need for them to listen to us. 
my heart is racing, 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 racing. And um, I was just very scared about how people were going to receive it. Hello, my name is Tara Egan, and I'm the president of the Minority Student Advisory Board. The first group took turns reading aloud emails between MSAB and administration. From CFO Holly Crawford to Tara Egan. Thank you. Did you know about the protest before it occurred? Because I know some people knew maybe five minutes before it started. No, I, I had I was not I was not at all prepared for it. Who is the leader of this group? Several times the coach has tried to stop them. I think the two of us in different ways had to figure out how to react in real time to an event that's so disruptive. All of that you process, will you not allow us to have process, a statement made? Will you allow us to have a statement? And in that moment like so many emotions overcame me. I was upset, I was sad, I was like, wow, like you really don't want to speak. Like you this is really upsetting you. Just a student like vocalizing our, our fears and our our frustration, this is really bothering you. This that is a process, faculty senate meeting. That process and you just have to have the courage to keep going. Like don't don't listen to them, just keep going. And I remember the first time I felt relief was um when the community came in from behind with their sides and I was the first like at first I thought like all right like it's gonna be okay like it's gonna be all right um because I knew we had people standing with us. Feldman agreed to hold a public forum that was scheduled for November 30th. Well thank you so, so much for listening. So I, <laughs> <laughs> commitment of the students and and the support uh, from many faculty persuaded me that it was best to go along with with that that request after it happened we just all hugged each other because again we leaned into our fear and it produced great results it produced great results um, that was the first time it was just more so like it felt like like now like now I understand like now I understand why I do it, why I feel like I was called to do it, like now I get it. The format was designed by administration and EBSAP. First, Fisher presented the proposal and answered 11 pre-written questions agreed upon by MSAP and administration. Then, instead of asking follow-up questions directly, attendees had to submit them on index cards to Egan and MK Gandhi Institute director, Kit Miller. After the forum, it became clear that there was a stark divide in the level of satisfaction between administration and the protesters. I think the structure is very hindering, very hindering, very silencing um, to the audience, to the students, to faculty and staff who have these types of concerns um, with the proposal, um, rather than having more so an open Q and A. I, I thought it was it was all conducted in a in a uh, way that fits with our values and, and, and it was respectful and, and so I, I was very pleased. What the majority wanted was a chance to have individual people be able to stand up and speak, speak directly to Commissioner Fisher and Feldman and say, this is, this is frightening, I'm scared. I was really happy with the respectful exchange of ideas and thoughts. Um, I was very happy with the way it went. The ad hoc committee includes staff, faculty, students, and a community member. They will create one or more reports that will not necessarily reach any one conclusion. I mean, our idea is to put together a plethora of ideas and recommendations that we get from feedback and submit it to the review board. I really believe strongly that we need to provide an armed officer that can respond for a situation involving a weapon. Um, or God forbid, a situation involving an active shooter as quickly as possible. The likelihood of an active shooter on this campus is way less likely than the likelihood of someone with a gun accidentally shooting someone. 